Hello everyone, this is Daniel right here and today I'm not sitting in my office but instead I'm outside in the darkness and it is not a normal devlog but it is a recap of the year 2020. I think sometimes when you jump from week to week and show these well rather small updates also for yourself sometimes you feel that um, everything is not going along smoothly and in a good um, velocity um, but in reality if you look back um, what you've accomplished throughout a whole year or let's say within the couple of months then you will realize that actually quite a lot of stuff has happened and like I said within this well video I want to go through all the steps and all the things which actually happened in terms of King's Blood and also for me it is kind of interesting and cool to see all of that stuff coming to life. Now if you're wondering why I'm in the darkness, I'm actually currently sitting in front of a river and th this is my second take of the video, um, but I nearly earned the Darwin Award by falling into the river because the light is shining into my eyes and I was striding around and nearly falling into the river so now I found a little bench and sat down now and now you get the more relaxed version of me telling you all this stuff instead of me always being nervous and in danger of falling into the river and never be found again. Okay. Um, but I think I still didn't answer why I'm at this river. So like three months, no, not three months ago, but um, I think like eight or nine months ago, it was, um, I think March or April, a colleague of me in my real life job got the virus. <laughs> she was actually one of the first ones who got it. And that meant that also myself as her room partner, her office partner uh, or her office colleague, I had to go into quarantine. And I'm one of those guys who always needs to work on something. And my real life job gives me a lot of fulfillment in that regard. But uh, since I didn't commute anymore, I had a lot more free time. And well, how do you fill this gap? <laughs> Uh, so you have to do something. You can watch TV, uh, you can look Netflix, um, you can play video games. But uh, for myself, um, this urge to create something and to be creative was not fulfilled. So um, a friend of me, um, you heard his name in a couple of the first videos, Veggie, um, he told me about Unity and that I should look into it. Well, he actually told me about that even a couple of months before, but then I always thought, so with Unity you can create games, right? Most of you will know that. Uh, and he told me, hey, let's create a game. And I always said like, no, that's not possible. We are all too deep, um, too structured in life. Structured is not the right word, but uh, it's basically impossible if you have a full-time job and to do a project that big just um, as a side project. That's like impossible or it is a good recipe to burn out, <laughs> but more on that later. When this Corona thing started, um, my brain started working and I was thinking, well, maybe, maybe um, I should check it out. Um, maybe it can be something and maybe it could also be something with which you could potentially earn money but uh, money has never been the main motivation for me the main motivation for me is just creating cool stuff and creating something you're proud of something you would play yourself and well if you look into my resume i've always been part of little hobby projects and trying to create game art stuff like that all right, so I thought, uh, let's give Unity a shot. And <laughs> you can see the first uh, steps um, I did in Unity in my first vlogs, because that is another thing I did. Uh, I thought it would be cool if someday you really succeed and everyone who knows me knows that I never surrender when I start a thing, I really want to finish it. So I thought it would be so cool if you could look into back into your the stuff you did, like, month ago or even years ago 
and to see the progress. And that is quite cool because I think there has been a lot of progress and if you see the stuff right here, these were really the first steps. So um, we looked into a couple of YouTube videos and it is funny because um, what you see right here was the first concept of the world map. So the basic idea for the game did not change too much. And um, now back to why I'm here sitting in the darkness, the basic idea for the game, it was created here, where I'm standing right now. at a river close to my home and I was really, well, feeling like the, in Germany you say, the Decke fällt dir auf den Kopf, uh, you say the, the roof is falling on your head. I felt really locked in, so I remember once during Corona I went here and I was just walking around for like five hours and I'm um, thinking about what would be a cool game. Well, and in the end the idea was to create an RPG with auto chess elements something like teamfight tactics and also with a little bit of civilization style or heroes of might magic right of course our ambitions were completely out of, sc of scope first we thought we do some something in 3d a heroes of might magic 3 world map 3d models stuff like that but we um, quickly realized that's really out of scope so um, those plans changed a bit and um, I think very early, also due to my vlogs, Andy joined the team and then we switched the idea um, from having a 3D world map to a two-dimensional map. And I think everything was still in this dreamer phase um, until we created the world map. So I found a tool and with this tool I painted the first version of the world map and then Andy went over it and he's very good. He's a super perfectionist so I really dig that trait of his character and he made everything even more beautiful and stuff I didn't even realize like the floating direction of the rivers so he fixed all these issues and then I think the world map looked really cool at that state the world map did not have any city names no story or anything attached but we had a starting point and I think this was very important to create this world map um, I think it was also in one of the, and now I'm attacked by an insect, but whatever. Um, I think it was the vlog when we first presented the world map, when also Dominic um, tasted the blood, so to say, and wanted to join the project. And, um, well, we assembled our team, so to say, and from there on we divided the tasks. So for me it has always been that I was the guy who thinks up all the systems and also I do a lot of the <laughs> like the flies about the stuff you just have to do when no one else wants them to do the monotonous stuff that's all right for me um, as long as I'm also the guy who's allowed to do all the creative stuff then it's good and we have Andy and he's responsible for most of the combat stuff and then we have Dominic, he's also a super good programmer. And Andy and Dominic, they are really super good programmers. Um, so Dominic took a lot of the um, systems and the system architecture. So, um, well, then let's start with um, the world, I would say. So, as you've seen, the world map kind of progressed. Um, we gave it city names, um, we implemented a rumor system and um, also a main storyline. So um, our game plays um, within, a, a set, within a fixed setting. We think about a free play mode as well, so that you can replay it unlimited times. But um, first time you play it, you should play the campaign. And I would say it is a really cool story and it's all written, most of it is written. The last chapters are still missing, but um, well, well, it's all a thing of time. And it's also very, uh, I think creative processes always are very demanding so and exhausting. So, um, well, this has to be done within this year then, I guess. But it's very f uh, progressed, I have to say. And well, now let's jump to the combat system. And the combat system, um, 
first when we started um, I thought it is not so hard you can finish it in like two or three months but it's uh, very far from reality there are so many aspects you have to implement all the stats you can see them right here we have like really a lot of step uh, stats implemented um, you have to um, implement um, bounding boxes pathfinding so pathfinding was something Andy started with and he finished it very fast and I was really happy because I tried uh, my hands on pathfinding finding as well and um, the A star algorithm <laughs> but it was really hard for me so our, our combat system now plays on a hexagonal um, combat field and yeah this 3d logon polygonal 3d First we wanted to do it in high polygonal graphic, of course we want to do all the graphics ourselves, but there is a devlog where I talk about that, that was really out of scope. Then I thought we should go towards a graphic like in Darkest Dungeon and we paint all the stuff ourselves, two, di two dimensional stuff ourselves. But um, you can see here my, f my masterpiece Boris, which I painted and which I animated uh, but it is not up to the standards of any other games so we decided to go to low polygonal graphic and to also use um, assets and animations as much as possible um, and I think it worked out quite well and the combat now progressed from iteration to iteration for instance what we can do now uh, we have a big base json file you can see it right here we can give a character multiple animations um, so we don't use that too much yet so this is maybe something we will polish later on and um, within this base character file we can basically build up our characters and just within the last couple of weeks andy now created this kind of system also for our enemies so um, in that regard we are kind of done and I can just tell you it was a lot of work. Now, Andy only creates the mechanics uh, most of the time, but um, then we also need the content, right? And when we started the project, I said, uh, we want to have like 100 characters because one of the main mechanics in our game are synergies. So if you have a group of, let's say 10 people and you bring along like three dwarves and three mages, um, they buff each other, but only if you, if you have a fixed amount. For instance, if you have five mages, nothing additional happens. But if you have six mages, then you get the next um, level of buffs. And we have three of these synergies. We have race, we have profession, and we have soul color. More about soul colors later on. But <clears throat> like I said, um, first of all, we wanted to go with 100 characters. But um, I'm very, sometimes very happy that Andy is quite realistic in that regard and he said this is just too much. So um, we went down now and tried to finish up like 50 characters and here you can see an overview. And this is also something I'm quite proud about because, well, we still have a lot to do in that regard, but um, the characters are close to being finished. I hope like in one or two months we have all the characters finished. And the hardest part about the characters is that every character also has a special attack. And um, this is also something really cool which Andy implemented. Um, and all of these little details when you start such a game you don't think about it. So if a character similar to Teamfight Tactics attacks or gets hit, his mana bar fills and or his limit bar <laughs> or whatever you want to call it, fo we call it focus actually, and if it is filled up then you trigger your special attack. And all these special attacks in our game are individual and in the background um, you can see a couple of these special attacks and makes a lot of work to create these special attacks. Well if Andy does them, <laughs> since he implemented all the systems, he um, can do it quite fast. For me it sometimes takes a couple of hours. Now, um, like I said, we have this JSON file and all these special attacks, but um, all these characters also need some art. Well, the, for the polygonal art, we often use assets, but um, to give them real character, that is also something I wanted to have right from the start. I wanted to have some beautiful art, not just something 
eye pain. And I think um, a lot of game devs, they think they can do everything themselves, but they are IT guys <laughs> and we don't have the, the skills to do that. I mean, some of us maybe, if you do pixel art, then maybe, but um, well, um, this is also a bit of a risk, uh, but we just now have found finally a very good artist who mass produces um, these beautiful character images for us and they also all have a story so this is more my part um, you can read up their stories on our web website so when we put them in our json file we also push them through on the website and there you can read them not all are published but some and also let me tell you that the texts are not um, super polished as I write them usually when I commute to my work in the metro. So um, yeah, but still I think um, the most important part is that um, you just have to finish stuff and then you can polish later on. So I think this is really hard for some people who are a bit more on the perfectionist side, but I really think you have to dish out system after system after system and then you can, you can go back and refine them. Um, well, now like I said, combat was a lot of um, work and a lot of small details has, have also been added. For instance, the UIs to the sides, like even this little shader, this blinking was a lot of work. I needed that. I think it looks awesome, but these are all little details which probably took a whole day of work or even more and they don't find that much um, um, appreciation so to say <laughs> but um, I think they really add to the game. Now let's talk about the core systems beside the combat system and the first core system where we laid our fingers on was the dialogue system and you will encounter countless of dialogues throughout all of the game um, I think I said it before that the main storyline, which is already like at least one hour plus, probably like two hours plus of text, <coughs> um, they will be um, displayed throughout um, the um, dialogue system. But the dialogue system has a lot of triggers and there is, has been a lot of work into create, uh, has been put a lot of work into creating these triggers. Let's say you fight against rats, and then you have a character who hates rats, then he would just start complaining about it. Right, so you have a lot of interaction with your followers and everything gets more alive. Right now, if you see our devlogs, you usually just see this uh, brownish world map, but there will be a lot of interaction and um, discussing with your followers and um, stuff like that. So I think um, I'm quite happy with the dialogue system and to be honest, it. I would consider it to be like 90% done. So maybe there needs to be some refinement, but I think most of it is done. So the next big core systems have been all the mouse movements, camera movements, all of that has been a lot of work. Um, but I think um, the next big systems were like the city menu and our home menu. So the city menu is the place where you can get most of the quests and the quests is so to say the next big system but let's talk about the city menu first so in the city menu you can find a description of the city and i think throughout while writing these texts the game really came to life so in my head i wrote all these texts and really a, a world was created and so you you cannot read all those texts yet but let me tell you that the world itself makes sense. There are different races, different cultures and I'm really happy with what we created. All of these information have been stored also in JSON files once again and we also have some artworks in that regard but in general the city UI itself does not look too beautiful. Um, you see that I recently changed the main UI, which was a big point of criticism. I think it got a lot more beautiful and we plan to do something similar also for the city UI. Now within the city um, you can also um, go to the tavern and there you get countless of um, rumors. We already have I think at least 50 or 100, 
I guess we already have like 100 rumors and we'll get more and more and I hope with these rumors you get just a deeper atmosphere and like these RPG elements you want to have in an RPG game. Now you don't, you not only get, um, you not only get rumors, sometimes you also get a random quest or you get an item you could purchase. Uh, but that's still, um, I mean, technically most of it is done, but content wise, it's still a lot to do. Um, what else do we have? Now we have the town hall, there you can get quests, similar to um, rumors giving you quests. And then we have the marketplace. Also, the marketplace is something we just added recently. Um, there you can sell your items, you find within quests, or you can also buy them. So it's quite cool. And um, the idea is also that every marketplace in every city has super powerful items which are very expensive and you won't be able to buy all of those. So you, you're always, you will always have the opportunity to spend your gold. So this won't be a game where you say, oh my god, I have millions of gold coins but I don't know what I can spend my money on. So there will always be opportunity to spend your gold. And let me tell you, all these items are randomized. So Dominic wrote a real cool um, program to randomize the creation of these um, items. And I have to apologize. The background, uh, the bells of the church. Don't know what's going on before I also made a little pause because the bells did not stop ringing. Well, that's it. Um, anyways. Yeah, the marketplace um, also will be the place where you can buy your resources for building up your home, more on that later. Um, we thought that maybe, at the beginning I thought it should be more like Heroes of Might and Magic, that you have stone mines and that you can cut your own wood. Maybe we will add it, but at the moment I would say the scope creep and we have to be careful. And at the moment you just have to buy your resources and gold is basically your universal resource which you have to spend to get the other resources, right? Now to the questing. Um, well, one more thing, we have one tab not finished. This is the reputation tab. So within every th city you should be able to build up your reputation. But that is something we still have to do, one of the tasks for the next year. But um, I think the most important part about the cities is that they supply you missions for questing. And well, it's very loud out here. I hope you can hear me. Anyways, um, all of the mission system is basically done. So what you can already do is you can um, accept a mission then it will just be displayed on the world map and also graphically there have been some updates you can see it right here just changing the question mark makes a difference and also adding some sounds also makes a difference but these are all little steps um, you cannot appreciate when you see them from a week to week basis only if you see like the big jumps um, all of that gets cool when the questing system works you can send your groups um, on a mission and um, yeah, then a combat starts and your group returns. And that has also been quite a lot of work because what you see there on the world map is basically pathfinding and what we used for it was a NAV mesh. And let me tell you, creating that NAV mesh really was a lot of work. I remember that actually all holiday I had this year, I put into this game and it took me like two full days to create this NAV mesh. Uh, all programmed by Dominic, of course, but like I told you before, sometimes I just do the monotonous stuff. And um, yeah, so it was a lot of work. And now um, your characters, they move along the streets and they go around hills. They cannot cross rivers. So this is what the Nuff Mesh is for. And uh, the characters, basically, they are Nuff Mesh agents. I think that's what they refer to. Yeah, and um, so we Im basically implemented pathfinding and laid our world map on top of the NAV mesh. All right, as soon as you enter the combat, um, you can position your um, units and that is part of the combat system, which Andy created. So as you can see, really a lot of single steps you had to do. And 
um, yeah, when they return, what they what we are still missing is that they get experience. And um, when they get experience, what we want to add is a really cool leveling system. But also more about that later. Um, in terms of the mission system, we also had a very cool idea, and this is the motivation system. So depending on the mission, um, for let's say you have a mission in the city and then you have someone who loves nature, then he's unmotivated to go on such a mission. On the other hand, if you have someone who loves nature and he has to fight animals, well, that's even worse. <laughs> okay, but now let's jump to one of the biggest systems in our game and this is the hideout or the home menu I sometimes refer to. And um, this um, UI element, so to say, is basically the place where all your followers live and the station where you manage your followers and you will have up to 50 followers <clears throat> and you can look them up and we created a super cool menu for the followers and just a heads up um, this menu is not completely finished and um, what we want to add also is um, like a little preview about the special abilities everyone has so this will hopefully come within the next couple of months there will be the first of these little preview images and then there will also be like the individual leveling for every character also every character can have um, up to two items i skipped this before of course when you do a mission you will get items so you will have tons of customization and i think everyone who plays the game will have a different experience just based on <clears throat> based on how you customize everything and how you level your individual followers what items you give them and stuff like that now we also have finished the construction hall there you can spend resources to um, improve your hideout so you start out with a very small cottage guild hall level zero and it goes up to level one two three and um, the bigger your guild hall is and the higher the level of the guild hall the more rooms you can add um, special buildings like a forge an alchemist most of these um, special buildings have not been implemented yet but the construction menu works and just recently i started with also creating visuals for those elements because this is something i really wanted to have in the game from the get-go um, you know i love these kind of games like Skyrim or Suicoden where you well build a castle and you not just see it in a UI that it's better but you can see it visually and what I would also love is that um, the followers then also walk around in this surrounding and I think this is not too hard to do especially with what we already have done um, and how I um, assembled all of these assets and um, progressively while i talk you can see it it's get it's getting very cold so i'm not sure how long i can bear this <laughs> well, well um well i'm gonna survive it anyways um the construction side is done and um also we have a research menu and a research tree and also like the most mechanics for the research tree work now of course the individual leaves of the research tree have to be implemented but a lot of them already are implemented as well so i think all of that is coming along also very nicely what we are still missing is a really good overview for the followers um, now you know we have a very cool view i feel for the individual followers but um, if you want to see your whole pack, then it does not look that pleasing yet. Um, in general, we have a lot of other um, UI elements as well. A quest overview. We thought about creating achievements, um, a little journal. But all of that is also a bit optional. Um, but most probably we will um, come up with, with something. Now I wanted to um, once again talk about the experience system um, and about the soul system. Now we had a vlog explaining all of that, but um, we felt that we are kind of missing a little bit of a 
stone paper scissor system or something from Pokemon you know if you have someone who has lightning then he's strong against someone with water or if you have fire it might be good or bad with versus water though um, all of our characters also have a soul synergy and if they level up um, if they level up they um, get a, spe a specific leveling tree and this leveling tree will be one of the soul colors fire earth whatever right and um, also to improve replayability a little bit um, these um, soul colors will be given um, randomly so fire mage will not necessarily have a soul color of fire he can also um, or not randomly a fire mage will not necessarily have a soul color of fire but he will just get a random soul color it could also be water and we had a cool dev vlog where we showed how we created the images for the soul colors um, because we use garn technology um, basically artificial intelligence and well i think this is also one of the next projects which we want to finish and you see there are not too many big mechanics left which we still need to do i think indeed it is the experience systems the enemies have been finished and i think the big things to come now are dungeons we sure as hell want to have dungeons <laughs> and um, to give you an impression about how dungeons are supposed to look um, basically what we want to have is a system of nodes and path and um, so you go into a dungeon and you have to go from start to end and um, so you can basically choose your way and then you have um, a node can be a fight or you can you can stand in front of a trap and um, well there are a couple of games which do it similar um, but I think dungeons are a must-have so they should be rare um, the normal mission is just a combat but there should be dungeons and also what we want to have are multi combats and um, we also implemented invasions right but if they clash into your city nothing happens yet so this is the losing condition and what we still need is the the event that when they clash into you then you have to defend your home and if you fail your game is over so these are actually the really big mechanics which we are missing right now now aside from that um, those are gameplay mechanics right Aside from that, we also have a couple of other tasks to do. We have to do, we have to make everything a bit more beautiful, like we did with the main UI. Some fluff like um, weather effects. Um, I always dream about moving trees. We'll see about that. And then one very, very big mechanic is, of course, saving and loading. So um, Dominic has some ideas in that regard, but um, that might be a hard thing to do. But well, aside, like I, I told you, if you look back, we, I, th I feel like we did most of the relevant mechanics. We implemented them already. And um, now let's talk about the scope of our game. And I think I'm going back now and I hope I won't fall into the river because i'm starting to freeze and maybe i can manage to talk while i walk without dying and um, winning the darwin award so in terms of time we think that or what we would like to um, do is that we finish the game within the next year and i hope that we can finish the main mechanics of the game until mid of the year and then i think we still have to add a lot of content so what we have to do is we have to write a lot of stories for yeah our individual characters you know we have about 40 or 50 characters so um, we have to create background stories for now we have the background stories but we have to embed them within quests you have to find them somehow right um, for a couple of characters we have already done that so these are also mechanics which we have already implemented. So you see this game is really, really rich and full of content. Um, but, um, well, now aside from the mechanics, we also have to, um, yeah, bring in the content. 
And I feel like if we finish most of the mechanics until the mid of the next year, we have a chance to finish the game until Christmas of next year. And um, to have a successful game, everyone who's doing indie dev knows that you also have to um, advertise. And of course, these vlogs are also a little bit of advertisement, but to be honest, I more or less do them to motivate ourselves, myself in particular, but also my teammates. And I just like to look back sometimes and see the progress. That's really helpful. But in general, you need to advertise. In that regard, we set up a Twitter account a couple of months back, and well, this YouTube channel. To be honest, um, YouTube is kind of hard. I think I would be happy to have a little, some more subscribers. I mean, for what do you need subscribers? But potentially, um, people will be interested in the game, and it helps you uh, keeping you motivated. But we also have a Twitter account, and um, the Twitter account got at least a little bit of traction. Um, but I'm not too sad that these social media accounts don't explode yet because I think when the content comes we have a lot more to show. Now one big thing which will come at the end will be voicing. Now it is debatable if we should really voice everything. I think we should not voice um, just the normal missions. But I really want to have voice actors for our main storyline and for all our followers. So they should be recognizable and it should be joyful to listen to them. So if you guys are interested to help out in that regard, that would be awesome. And I have to apologize, cannot offer too much money, already spend way too much and you know usually you have a publisher we don't have a publisher we are just three crazy dudes and do everything on our own accord so yeah if you uh, would enjoy voicing a character or if you would enjoy localizing um, we don't have the implementation for localization yet but if these these are things you enjoy um, be welcome to participate in this project. So if you enjoy stuff like that, then just check into our Discord. There you can also talk to us. You can find all the details, I think, on our website. Um, since there is not too much going on, sometimes we reply kind of late, but usually I read every message and try to reply to everyone. Also, I have to say, this game is not finished yet, and a lot of your suggestions have been gone directly into the game. Okay, and um, now I progressively realize that it's very hard to walk in the dark and to not fall into the river. So that's why we have a lot of cuts right here because my concentration is not the best, but I'm progressively freezing and <laughs> try to get back to my car now so that I can drive home and be in a warm environment again. Um, yeah, um, I feel um, that maybe I forgot 100 things I wanted to tell you, but um, uh, maybe not, let's not overdo it. But we'll see how everything is going. Um, I really wish this project finds an end within the next year. It would make me very proud, would be very cool. I think it is a dream of a lot of computer scientists. Not many have the discipline to finish it, but well, we're gonna fight for it. And if we can finish it, you'll see in the next year. So happy new year to every one of you and see you in a hopefully better 2021.